So we've looked at geometric series before. Let's say we started with this one. Uh, we'll multiply everything by 2 here. So we would get a series that looks like this, say. So if we wanted to find the sum of the first four terms, well, we could we could add those four up and we would come with come up to a number or we could use our formula that we have here that we saw in the other video video but what we're going to look at here are infinite geometric series so that means this thing is going to just keep on going here forever so we can see here that the numbers in this in this series here the numbers keep getting bigger and if the numbers keep getting bigger then there's no way that if we add these all up forever that they're going to approach a certain number because we just keep adding bigger numbers all the time so we call a series like this a divergent series that's what this series would be when the numbers keep getting bigger all the time and we keep adding bigger and bigger numbers that's a divergent series. So a divergent series is a series where the sum of these infinite numbers, these infinite number of terms, does not add to a fixed number. The numbers are just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But let's say we started with the number 8 and then we added 4. So you can see here the ratio is a half. 4 divided by 8 would be a half. And then half of that 2. And then 1 and then a half, and then 0 0.25, and then 0 0.125, and so on and so on and so on. Now what's happening to these numbers is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually we're going to add some really, really, really small numbers. You know, we could, we could start to see what some of these things are. If I go 8 divided by 2... Here we go. This is what I was wanting. See how small these numbers are getting? Now it's gone into scientific notation. So 0 0.001. These are how many zeros are to the left or how many places the decimal needs to move to the left. So eventually, you know, this number here would be 0 0.0090s and then 2328. A very, very tiny number. This is what we call a convergent series. And a convergent series is a series where the sum of the infinite number of terms would add to a fixed number. So I could add these all up because eventually these really, really, really small numbers that are going to be keep adding on at the end here are not going to significantly change the number. So it will approach a finite value. So if we're going, let's go back and look at these divergent series. If these numbers are going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that means that the ratio would have to be something more than one. If we start multiplying by something more than one, that's going to keep getting the numbers bigger. Or if our ratio was less than one, like it was minus two or something like that, if R was minus two, then the numbers would keep getting bigger, except they would alternate from being positive and negative. So if R is greater than one or R is less than one, then we're going to have a divergent series. But if our numbers are getting smaller, so here the numbers are getting smaller, that would mean that the ratio has got to be a fraction somewhere between one somewhere between minus 1 and 1. And so when the ratio is between negative 1 and 1, then our series will add to a finite number because these numbers will get smaller. And I guess we could have had equal to back here. If we had r equals to 1, we would also have a divergent series. So if we know that our infinite geometric series, the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, then we can add them all up. And this would be our formula for finding the sum of an infinite number of terms. And that's what this little, it's kind of a sideways 8. Looks a little bit like a sideways 8. That's the sum of an infinite number of terms. And we just need to know what the first term is divided by 
1 minus the ratio. So in this particular sum here, 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus a half and so on, the first term is 8 and the ratio here is a half or I could say 0 0.5. And 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 or a half and 8 divided by a half would be 16. So if you added 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 and a half and then all these other little pieces up and these tiny little ones, they would approach a sum of 16. The diver divergent series you see up here would not have a sum. Even though you could still use this formula, you wouldn't be allowed to use it because this has no sum. The numbers keep getting bigger. So this is our formula here for finding the sum of an infinite geometric series, but the restrictions are is the ratio must be between negative 1 and 1 if we're going to use this sum. Let's look at a couple examples. So in these examples, let's see if we can find the sum of each of these infinite geometric series. So let's assume these go on forever. Well, in the first case, we know the first term is 5 and the ratio is 1 third. Well, since the ratio is less than 1, then this will have, this, this series here will converge since the ratio is between 1 and minus 1. So we can use our sum here. Sum is equal to T1 divided by uh, 1 minus R. So T1 is 5 and the ratio is 1 third. So 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. And remember when we have 5, a number divided by a fraction, so we've got to just remember a little bit of fraction work here, so 5 divided by 2 thirds, 5 divided by 2 thirds is the same thing as 5 times the reciprocal, which would be 3 over 2. So the sum of this first sequence or series would be 15 over 2, or 7 and a half if you like. Let's look at the sec second example. So we have a first term of 2, and the ratio is 5 fourths. This is no good. This is going to diverge because the ratio is more than 1. The number, the ratio is 5 fourths, which is 1.25. So that means these numbers are going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this will have no sum. Looking at the third example, uh, we can see here that the first term will be 3. And the ratio is always the second term divided by the first term, which is negative 2. Well, this is going to also diverge because the ratio is smaller than minus 1. It's at negative 2. So this will have no sum. And finally, in the last example, we've got a first term here of 3 quarters. And the ratio is going to be negative 1 half, that's T2, divided by T1. 3 quarters. So this will be negative 1 half, instead of negative 1 half divided by 3 fourths, we'll do negative 1 half multiplied by the reciprocal, which is negative 4 sixths times across times across, and reducing that is negative 2 thirds. So that's fine. Negative 2 thirds is, is uh, between negative 1 and 1. So this one will converge and we will have a sum. And so sum is equal to a divided by 1 minus r. Sorry, not a. We use t1 now instead of a. So the first term, which was 3 quarters, divided by 1 minus minus 2 thirds. So lots of fraction work in this one. 1 minus minus is the same thing as 1 plus 2 thirds. And 1 we can write as a fraction as 3 over 3. So this becomes 3 quarters divided by 3 plus 2 is 5 thirds. And now 3 quarters divided by 5 thirds is 3 quarters times 3 fifths. And so we would get 9 twentieths as the sum of this infinite geometric series if it goes on forever. So let's summarize the infinite geometric series. So 
So for an infinite geometric series, a series will have an infinite sum if the ratio is between negative 1 and 1. In other words, r is less than 1 but greater than minus 1. If that's the case, then we say that the series converges. A series will not have an infinite sum if the ratio is greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 1, usually written like this. We would say that that series diverges. So if we have if we have a convergent series, in other words, if the ratio is between negative 1 and 1, then the formula for finding the infinite sum, sum of the infinite number of terms, is equal to the first term, t1, divided by 1 minus the ratio, which is r.